So let me just brief you in on what's happening here. So we have a teacher with two classes, uh, 12A and 12B. So what's happening here is that uh, in 12A, they're having phase two phase classes. And then in 12B, uh, they're having online classes. And then uh, this table here gives us the time spent uh, teaching right uh, the two classes and then here we have uh, the average result uh, of 12 a right the weekly results and then here we have the average uh, weekly results uh, for 12 b so that is the data we're dealing with here and then 1.1 says that uh, let's determine the equation of the least squares regression line uh, of 12 a right so our x here is going to be um the time spent uh teaching right so let me write that down and then our y is going to be the uh average result uh for the class right so we have uh the average result for grade 12 a right so you cannot uh, really calculate the least squares regression line uh manually right uh, more especially if the equation has only three marks so to do this uh we're going to use a uh, calculator right uh so let me show you how we actually do that uh so on your calculator you want to press a uh, mode or setup there right and then this menu here will pop up when this menu pops up you press three right uh when you press three uh then this menu here will pop up uh we look in for the equation for the least regression line right uh that equation says that uh y is equals to a plus b x right so we're going to press two so that we can uh open this tab here right uh so i'm just gonna press two when we press two we have x and y right so our x is going to be the time spent teaching and our y is going to be the average results for that class right uh 12 a so let's put in uh the values uh for x so on this table here you can see that we have two uh for two eight four six twelve ten eleven so i'm just gonna put that in right so i have uh two and then i press equals two and then i have eight i have four i have six and then i have twelve i have ten and i have eleven right uh, that's for the x values now i have to go to the uh, y values so to go to the y values i'm gonna uh move to that uh column there and then i'm gonna uh move up to the first one so the first y value uh for 12 a right the result uh we have 42 here so i'm gonna put uh 42 after 42 we have 62 and then we have uh 48 after 48 52 64 uh, press equals to and then 63 pressing equals to again uh 67 and then uh, that's it right we only have uh seven data points so after you put all your numbers you press equals to right and then after you do that you're gonna press ac just like i'm doing right now so there we go i press ac when you press ac you'll come back to uh, this menu right here where we started but then now we want to go and retrieve our value for a and our value for b right so that we can have uh, the equation of the least squares regression line so how do we do that to we'll press shift after pressing shift we press one and then this menu uh pops up right we want uh, the least squares regression line so we're gonna press five because that's where we have regression right uh, reg so when you press five uh, this menu pops up you can see that on one we have a on two we have b and so on so we're looking for a right so let's press one and then uh and a will pop up in your screen you press equals to and you will get uh, the corresponding value so now we know that uh a is equals to a is equals to what 38 uh point two six and then now we're looking for b right uh b is equals to what uh so now what you want to do you're gonna press ac again you press shift you press one uh you press five and then you press two right and then what is b so b is two point uh four six right so now our equation for the least square regression line uh, will be y 
uh, is equals to 38.26 uh, plus uh, B, which is 2.46 uh, multiplied by uh, X, right? Uh, what we substituting in. And then just like that, uh, you have calculated uh, your least square segregation line. Now let's do 1.2. Uh, so 1.2 says that uh, let's write down the correlation coefficient of the grade 12a uh, results in respect of the time spent teaching. So uh, we're looking for R, the correlation, right? In order to find the correlation, we're going to go back uh, to the same menu, right? So that is shift and then you press 1 and then we press 5 for regression and then you can see R that is on number 3, right? Uh, so if you press 3 and you press equals to, then you get R is equals to 0 0.966, uh, six, right? So that just 9. Uh, seven, right? If you round it off to two decimal places, uh, so that's our uh, correlation coefficient of the grade of A results in respect to the time spent uh, teaching. Uh, and then now 1.3 says that uh, let's comment on the correlation between the time spent teaching and the average results of grade 12 A. So we can see that we have a correlation value of 0 0.97, right? And then this is very high. Uh, so for our comment, uh, we can say that uh, we have a very strong positive uh, correlation, right? So you just write down, we have a very strong uh, positive correlation uh, between the time spent teaching and the average result. It seems like um, the more we teaching, the more the results are going up, right? So that's a very strong positive correlation. And then now we can do 1.4. So 1.4 says that uh, the equation of the least square segregation line of grid 12b is, and then, so now we have the line for grid 12b, right? Uh, grid 12b is given as uh, y is equals to 15.74 plus 4.54x. Uh, and then uh, the question says, let's calculate uh, the difference in the result achieved by each class had Ms. Molife uh, spent the average time in uh, to complete a particular section, right? So, um, so now for grade 12 uh, A, right? For grade 12 uh, A, let's just copy down uh, the equation before we can go any further. We have 38.26 plus uh, 2.46x, right? So we want to find uh, the difference in the result achieved by each class if Miss Molife spent the average time to complete a particular section, right? Uh, so the difference, we'll be finding uh, the difference between grade 12B and grade 12A, right? Uh, if the teacher took the average time. So what we have to do first is to calculate the average time that the teacher took, right? So to do that, uh, we can say that uh, X bar, you know, we're looking for the mean, the average, basically. And then the time spent, we have the time here. Uh, that I just circled in red, so we can just find the average of that. Uh, that will be 2 plus 8 plus 4 plus 6 plus 12 uh, plus 10 plus 11, and then we divide in everything by the number of terms. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we are dividing that uh, by 7, right? And then if you put that in your calculator, uh, you should get uh, 7. Point uh, five seven right so now we have um the average time spent we can then substitute it in our two equations right so what are we saying we're saying that uh for 12 b uh we're going to have uh y is equals to uh, uh the equation 15.74 plus 4.54 and then in place of x we put in the average time which is 7.57 uh, right and then if you put that in your calculator you should get uh, 50 uh, point one zero seven eight right and then if we go to 12a so let's go to 12a so for 12a we have y is equals to uh, 38.26 plus 2.46 multiply by x, right? x is our average, that will be 7.57. Uh, 7. So let me just put that in my calculator. 
uh, and here I'm getting 56.8822, right? Uh, so now uh, we're looking for the difference, right? So let's say uh, the difference, uh, let me just write that in words. So the difference uh, is going to be equals to uh, the highest minus the lowest, right? So that will be 56.8822 minus 50.8822. 1078 and the answer for that charge will be 6.77 so that is the difference uh, when the teacher spends uh, the average time to complete a particular section now let's do 1.5 so 1.5 here is saying that uh, let's identify an outlier in grade 12b so let's go to grade 12b and see if uh, we can find an outlier right uh, so for two hours spent teaching, uh, the average result is uh, 9%, right? And then for four hours, the average time is 45. Uh, for six hours, 47. Uh, for eight hours, 63. And then for 12, we have 61. For 10, we have 64. And then for 11, we have 62. So you can see clearly here that, um, and then for 12A, uh, for two hours, we have 42%, right? So you can see that uh, this 9% here is an outlier. It's very far away from all the other data points, right? Uh, so we can say that uh, when X is equal to 2, and our y is equals to nine uh that's where our outlier lies right because uh for two hours uh we expect expecting an average result of around uh 40 percent right because that is uh, what is happening in 12a so um that point there is an our is our outlier and then 1.6 is saying that let's indicate a valid reason uh for this outlier so let's not forget that um for 12b they were being taught online right so what valid reason can we give for that outlier maybe the learner was not attending right you just open that zoom link and you let it play uh, while you do something else or maybe the learner did want to attend but there were uh, connectivity issues a lot of uh, you know issues can arise 